Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey there, and behind the camera, I'm Ralph. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. He likes to cook and I like to eat. So you know what? It's the perfect balance. And thank you for joining us. Um, we are kind of still in a real celebratory mode here um, for the wonderful harvest bounty coming in in our beautiful state of Michigan. Um, and perhaps where you are, there's great things happening on the farms as well. Um, and today it's we like got a tomato a whole, festival. Yeah, today we got some beautiful, yeah, maybe not perfect, <laughs> but beautiful homegrown, farm fresh tomatoes that it really taste like tomatoes. I just tasted a bit, and yeah, they are. Really delicious. And, those uh, those of you who live in the, the Midwest and Northeast, you know that from like October through June, you can't get fresh tomatoes. So the tomatoes you buy in the store are grown either in a hothouse or they're picked green and shipped, and they don't taste like anything. They don't have much tomato flavor. But during the summer, if you love tomatoes, this is the time because these tomatoes are so flavorful. And you know what else? They What's match that, your red and white kitchen. They do. Even better. Um, if you don't like tomatoes, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, but we're going to make a tomato pie. Yum. So we're going to combine things that we love, tomatoes and pies. Um, and I've made tomato pies over the years and often to me, one of the things I don't like, or that never really works well with a tomato pie, is tomatoes, like most, I guess tomatoes actually a fruit, but like most fruits and vegetables, is mostly water. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when the tomatoes cook in the pie, they release their natural juices, and you have a very wet, very soggy pie. We don't want that. Right. So what we're going to do, Ralph, is we're going to make a roasted tomato pie. So we're going to roast the tomatoes first in the oven. Oh, so that'll kind of dry them out a bit. To, to sort of exactly extract some of those liquids out of the tomatoes. Then we're going to make the pie. I'm also going to do my crust first as what we call a blind bake. Send your step saver here with his little... Uh, yes, I'm not... You know what? It just didn't work out today for me to make crust from scratch, so please forgive me. But you've done it on many other episodes of Cavalcade right. of Food. And you know what? I We're taking a shortcut today, but if you want to make your own pastry crust, by all means, and I often do, but today I just didn't have time, so we're using a step saver. So what I'm going to do first is blind bake the crust, and what that means is we're going to bake the crust, not all the way, but partially. I've got the oven at 425 degrees. Yes, it's hot in here. <laughs> and it's August, and we have the oven going, so it's hot. But I've got the uh, oven at 425. Um, I've got my crust here, my pastry rolled out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stab it with my fork. I think around. it's called aerating. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. Um, anyways, we're going to poke some holes. This will help with the, kind of the air circulation and whatever. Keep it from puffing out, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, we're going to put those here. Then, um, what I use instead of pie weights, which I don't have, is I have this bag of rice that, that I use over and over again. I only use it for this purpose, which is to help keep the pastry way down. Way down. Okay, so it doesn't but, puff up But in don't the put oven. the plastic bag in the oven. No, don't <laughs> put the plastic bag. And I'm using some parchment paper here. And... So do you recycle this rice? And yes, I use it over and over and over. All right. So you kind of fill it as close to the top without spilling yeah. over as you can to weigh it down evenly. Okay. 425. We're going to put this in for about 25 minutes. That's okay. the blind bake. It's called blind bake. Done for now for the crust. Now I'm going to continue with my tomatoes here, Ralph. Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking these tomatoes where we have little blemishes because... Because they're real. They're real. And you know what? Sometimes 
things just don't come out perfectly, and that's fine. That's my hand picking up the part he just cut off, and I'm going to eat um, it. I'm using a knife to cut rounds like this. Oh, maybe a quarter inch thick to a half inch thick of these tomatoes. Look how nice. at how red yeah, they are. Look at how, be how nice they're cutting. beautiful. They're firm and juicy at the same time, and you have to have a very sharp knife to do this right. Yes, you do. Now, I started with about um, two and three quarter pound of tomatoes all told together here. So you just put them on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. Yes, and I'm also going to, um, I'll drizzle them with a little olive oil, and I will also, let me cut this out. Season them? Season them with salt and pepper. And the thing is, I've got the oven going now at 425 degrees. I'm going to take advantage of that hot oven, and I'm going to use that to roast these tomatoes. Okay? So. You started off with, you said it almost three pounds or two and a half? Two and three quarter pounds. Okay. So, I'm going to slice this up. And we can come on back and when I'm done and I'll I'll kind of dress these a little bit before I put them in the oh, oven. Just gonna okay. put a nice little drizzle of olive oil here on these tomatoes. Then we are gonna give it a nice little sprinkle here of some salt. This is kosher salt. Looks coarse. Yes, coarse. It might be coarse sea salt. It's either coarse sea salt or coarse kosher coarse kosher salt. Say that five Easy times real fast. Say. Okay. Okay, but it's coarse. And I'm gonna give it some. So you're seasoning these now, even though they're gonna end up in the pie probably with another season or another yeah, round of seasoning. Yeah, we'll season as we go okay. with our things. Okay. So this is just to kind of like uh, get the, some of the liquid out. Yes. I'm gonna put those in the oven. Okay. So, uh, I'll keep an eye on them. These will, might roast for about 25 or 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, at a 425. Right, well, you can see here. You've been doing some onions. I have been, and these are pretty much done. Just want them that nice, look how soft they mm -hmm. are, caramelized. So, I had a large Fidelia onion. I sliced it. And I sliced one half, I diced the other half because I wanted oh, a little bit of different shapes. Um, I put in two tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil, and I have sauteed it in this pan. Oh. I'm going to turn that off. The olive oil is keeping it from burning. I was wondering yes. why it's been going for a while and not burning. Woo. Okay, let's come in here, and our pie crust is nice and done. Take that out. And how's our tomatoes doing? Oh yeah, we're gonna leave those in for probably another 10 or 15 minutes or so, okay? And let those continue to evaporate and roast. Uh, then we'll start putting things together. You want this pie crust to cool down all the way mm -hmm. anyways. You can see on the, I can't lift it up because it's hot, but on the bottom down here, it's nice and Done. Yeah, I can see it around okay. the crust, the yeah. outer edge, that it's nice and crispy, so golden brown. It's going to bake again, but it'll have a lot of ingredients in it. Right. But at least it's already got the crust, so it won't absorb. Okay. And you know what? We're making a tomato pie a la Kevin yes. because this is not your Philly tomato pie, which is more like a pizza or a variation on that's a. That's right. You're right, Ralph. Yeah. So um, that's we want to make that clear. Has something local right they call it tomato pie yeah we should have made that clear at the beginning so this is sort of a, a midwestern version or i'm calling it kevin's tomato pie okay okay ralph we are going to put together some herbs for our tomato pie uh i need about a half a cup well you've trimmed back your herb garden very nicely well some things were out of control unfortunately <laughs> and it's still this is mint which i keep pulling it comes back i pull it out all it every once in a while it but sure does it's good to um, have on hand so we've got some dill here but i think what i want to do is i want to get some basil for sure okay okay want me to hold the basket yeah so we're gonna 
Look at basil's me. I'm fairly strong. I don't want to yeah. over basil, but I love basil. It goes great with tomatoes, of course. Then this is actually celery leaves, which is terrific, but I don't think I want it for this dish. Um, this is basil also. This is this wonderful, this will be fine what we're using, but this is a, a small miniature. We, we used it in something else. Maybe the watermelon salad recipe we did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is regular parsley. Just regular, whoop, curly parsley. That really freshens up a, 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 a tomato pie, I'm sure. It sure does. And then these are chives. Chive talking. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is we're going to maybe put a couple more. Look at me, I'm multitasking. Yes, you are. Excellent. Um, I think that's good. So chives, parsley, and basil will be a nice combination. So we're going to just rinse these off. Now snip them up and we'll put this in the, the layering for our tomato pie. Wow, that's kind of fun. It is fun. So you, you can just use scissors to cut herbs? Yes, absolutely. Why not? Um, so I rinsed these off and dried them in a paper towel and I stuffed them in this little bowl and snip snip. So any uh, special scissors? or No, just kitchen shears. Okay. So we keep it simple. Okay. So, um, so you've got some uh, southern Duke's mayonnaise. I do. Mayonnaise. I have some Duke's mayonnaise, which we think is pretty good. Although up here in the north, we generally use Hellman's. Oop, that's not going to work. Um, Hellman's is easier to find than Duke's, but uh, every once in a while we can find Duke's up here and we get it. Um, so I'm going to put a third of a cup of mayonnaise in my measuring cup. A lot of people have asked me over the years about this measuring cup. Like, what is that thing? Um, this is called a Wonder Cup. You can find this online. Uh, in the lingerie section? <laughs> no, not that kind of Wonder Cup. This is a Wonder Cup uh, that allows you to fill um, with, it's great for measuring things like, liquid, like, like uh, mayonnaise, like shortening. Certain viscosity. Yes, like honey, peanut butter, all that kind of stuff. Things that are somewhere in between a liquid and a solid. Absolutely. Um, it really does, uh, and because you know you can you fill it. So I, I I put the plunger down to a third of a cup right here, and then we just oh. push it out, and there it is. Yeah, because it must be hard to measure other so, ways, those kind of things. That couldn't be easier. Now, uh, to this third of a cup of mayonnaise, I've got one half cup of grated Parmesan cheese mm. and one half cup of shredded Swiss cheese. Now, could you use other cheeses? Yes, you could. The Parme I would state I would use the Parmesan because it's got a strong flavor, but I would instead of Swiss, if you can get it easily, you could substitute for Gruyere cheese, which would be very nice. This is going to kind of make a thick paste. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? With the mayo and the cheeses. Oh yeah. That we're going to spread over the top of our pie. So you kind of gently fold or mix those, mm -hmm. incorporate all those ingredients without Together. Uh, overdoing it. So that's goes that will okay, go on. We have top. our crust. Now we're gonna start with our tomatoes. Ooh, layers first. of tomatoes. So I'm gonna just sort of put some of these bigger slices if I can get them. Oh my. But the, a lot of the water from the tomatoes have e evaporated while it was roasting. Thank you. So when you opened the oven to get the tomatoes out, they were it was like a, a it was steam. steamy. Okay. All right. So now to that, we're going to take some of the onion and we're going to spread that around. Okay the sauteed onions with butter and olive oil mm -hmm. and a little salt and pepper. Then a little S, a little P, and some of our herb mixture. Nice fresh herbs. Okay. Loving it already. And we're gonna keep moving on here. And we're gonna take our 
tomatoes. Kind of get them to the edge here. That's one thing I like about Kevin's uh, approach to cooking is um, he has fun. He does comfort food. He does it with love, but he's not fussy. He's just like if I was doing this, I'd be so worried about making sure those herbs were like spread out just right. But I think it's good <laughs> for. No, I'm saying this as seriously as a compliment because it would be nice to get a bite that has like some more herbs than, than others and you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I'm liking I'm that about the, your approach. Yeah, you're not fussy. You're very Julia Child and Zen about it. You know, it'll come out how it should. Okay, I'm yeah. going to put our another Next. dose of onions. Let's try to spread that out evenly if we can. Is that what I said? <laughs> well, again, I'm, you're right. I'm not being fussy. Uh, I love we'll how there's so many salt. fun layers to this. I we'll didn't realize. Of pepper, and then our garden herbs. So okay. now I think this will be our last layer of tomatoes. So this will be the third and final layer mm -hmm. of tomatoes. I think it's going to work out just right. And as we said before, this is an actual tomato pie as opposed to the Philly style, which is more like a a delicious variation on a pizza, pizza maybe you might say it's a, it's more like but it, both of them bring out just the simple delicious flavor and celebrate the, t the delicious flavor of the tomato i think the other version also uses parmesan cheese and olive oil basically i think that's a good way to approach it with what you said ralph this is a celebration the tomato's the star yeah so you want to make sure not to over shadow it with too many other things right and just the things that bring it out so we're going to put a little more S, a little more P, and another little sprinkling. I'm going to save some of this for garnish of our herb mixture. For the top. Yep. And then... That looks good just like that, doesn't it? So now this um, cheese and mayo mixture is going on top? Yes. It will create a sort of a crust, you said? Yes. Now that's going to be fun to spread. <laughs> well, we're going to do it. Uh, kind of gradually with a knife here. Okay. Oh, it's almost like when you're frosting a frosting a cake. I'm going to try to get it to the sides. This is going to take some patience in doing, but see how we're doing it here. You want me to come back? So yeah, in case come you on need back. To swear? But we'll get it. We'll get it. I'm just going to take a little at a time. I'm just going to spread it over the top. It's not supposed to be a thick layer. We'll let it cuss in. I've private. got that cheesy mayo. Topping spread pretty much did not cuss, by the way. And it's going to melt. You have, it's going to melt, but you have to take your time. It's like if it's too heavy to spread, you know what? Add another tablespoon of mayonnaise. Ah, and we'll thin it out thin a little bit. Okay, but that's fine. Um, uh, it's not supposed to look perfect because it's going to bake it's gonna into bake and, and it's going to actually into brown lightly. Right. It's going to kind of look so like a crust. This is more of a topping. Now, what I'm going to do because the crust itself is already fairly cooked and brown. I don't want it to brown anymore. Ah. This is something that we use. Um, if you didn't have one, you could just put paper, uh, aluminum foil Some around the Some kind of a edge. guard? Yeah. This just goes like that, okay? And that prevents that, that edge from browning any further. I'm going to put this in our 350 degree oven all for about 30 minutes or until that, that top, um, the, the mayo cheese mixture, it's just nicely browned. Just browned. Our tomato pie has been in uh, about a little more than 35 minutes, almost 40. To look at that. Look at that top. Okay. I'm looking and I'm smelling. Um, so that's the. That's our yummy mayonnaise cheese crust <laughs> there. You can see it's bubbling. Yes. Um, and there's. You know, there's liquid in there, you can see, oh my uh, from the tomatoes still. It looks so good, and I am but so impatient because I know it's got to cool down for a little while. It has while. to really cool. Um, oh boy, it has to really good. cool and set up. It's like lasagna or any kind of dishes like that. So we're going to leave it there uh, for a while until it's really cooled off enough to cut into, okay? I can't wait to try it. And then you have a little bit of fresh herbs left fresh you can herbs. sprinkle on top. Yes. So this is our, look at that. This is how we're gonna serve it with our, our fresh herb garnish. All right, everybody, here it is. Tomato pie, we got one piece there. 
How long did we let that set for? Oh, for good, a good 45 minutes. So I was passing out from hunger. <laughs> well, that piece is for you, Ralph. All right. I'm going to cut a more petite <laughs> portion. Oh, please. Um, and let's see. So here. it's important to let it set yeah, for a while. Yeah, you really do. A while. At, at least you could even let it set for an hour if you wanted to. This because this is so hot. It'll stay warm, and it'll, then it, it, it'll, it'll stay warm. It'll help it um, get under it. It'll help oh, it stay. Oh shucks! You gotta get it from the back. Is that it? Yeah, Let that's me, the trick. You gotta no. Hold the on, back. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it like this. All right, do it. There we it. go. Okay, <laughs> almost a piece. But it's um, it's important to let it cool a bit, and then it'll hold together. Because even yes. though you roasted the tomatoes, there's you can still, still there's you can still see there's some moisture in the. All right, now let's give it the, the old pan. taste test. So let's give it the old taste test. And because that's at the end of the day what counts. Yeah. I think you like it. Oh my gosh. The top. With the cheeses and the mayo. But the tomato comes through. Is the star of the show. So it comes through. The fresh herbs and the onion, the caramelized onion, really good. Wow delicious um, so you know what we are so glad that we had this chance to use these beautiful summer tomatoes coming in we get a lot during the uh, summer I'm Hunts. sure you do too people offer you bags of tomatoes because they're just one of those fruits or vegetables that grow plentiful so make good use of them when they're like this they're delicious and this is the best time to have them so fresh they have a great flavor so you know what there's lots of great, wonderful ways to use them. This is just one. We've done others on Cavalcade, so search for tomatoes and you'll find them. But oh, this is really great. Tomato pie. We had a great time putting this together. Tomato uh, pie a la Kevin. And we can't wait to get in and eat it because we've been waiting a long time for it to cool down. But thank you for hanging out with us and being a part of it. We hope you had fun. We sure did. We sure did. And thank you to Lee Oscar of the band War from this solo album we picked up recently. Love the music. Making some fun summer music in the background. So enjoy your summer and see you tomato. <laughs> and thanks for watching Cavalcade of Food. Bye. Later, tomato.